Greetings all! Last Outrider here with a quick follow-on video to my Cowboy Bebop video of a week ago. I guess I should have waited a week because uh, as of yesterday, it's been canceled after one season. Three weeks after release, which is not usual. There are only three reasons that a show gets canceled that quickly after release. One, it's horrible. Like, you know, 10% on Rotten Tomatoes. Horrible. Two, it's insanely expensive. Too expensive for it to possibly make any money. Like Star Trek Discovery which blew 80% of its budget by the end of the second episode of season one type of stupidity. Um, and finally, three, politics. Something behind the scene is so horrible that the show just needs to be canceled. Um, examples of that? or should have been of that, uh, the Force Awakens, Last Jedi, you know, um, Game of Thrones, Blood Moon. These shows were all destroyed for the same reason. Some group of people decided that they wanted to revolutionize the movie or television industry with their modern progressive concepts of storytelling. Game of Thrones Blood Moon was so horrible it didn't get past the pilot. HBO was willing to throw away 50-60 million dollars to make sure that that show never saw the light of day after watching the pilot. How horrible must it have been? Uh, Star Wars, I don't need to tell you how horrible that was. I think we all know. So, what did Cowboy Bebop do? It was less about what it did and more about what it planned to do in season two. In my first video, I said that Cowboy Bebop was totally, had no understanding of what anime was and culturally insensitive to Japanese thinking. I hoped that they were going to fix this in season two. That's me being the optimist. Apparently, not only did they know how bad they were, it wasn't an accident. Cowboy Bebop, at some point in time, had been taken over by misguided social warriors who decided that Japanese culture, and anime in particular, was a particularly misogynistic, misguided medium that needed... <clears throat> fixing. As such, there was a deliberate attempt to scrub all Japanese influences from the show. I had to go back and look more carefully to see that if this was true. And, um... Other than the main cast, which we know were none of them were Japanese, there were no extras that were Japanese. There were, and in many Japanese anime shows, you can see like street signs or extras or shop signs or something still written in with Japanese characters. As far as I could see, walking through this entire show, I couldn't find any. Japanese on any signs in any of the backgrounds. Maybe somebody else can find them. They used Arabic. 
They use Russian acrylic letters. Sometimes I think I saw a Korean, but no Japanese. Even the sushi vendor that Spike went to for his message from Anna and uh, then eventually his sniper rifle scrubbed. Even that guy wasn't Japanese. None of the signs on the stall, I don't think, were Japanese. This was not a mistake. This was done on purpose. People wanted to send a message that anime, as I said, it was a misogynistic, exploitative medium that needed social justice. Starting with the character Faye Valentine, who in the comics, uh, I excused this as a little creative license. You know, it, Japanese characters typically take a long time to build up their background stories, and I understood 10 episodes. They wanted to speed it up, just have Faye come in and be a bounty hunter from the beginning. I, again, was overly optimistic. No. They found her character to be misogynistic, exploited, and needed fixing. All the way from her outfit, and to the making sure that she was cast as a Latino instead of as an Asian. I believe in the series she was supposed to be from Singapore. And... Uh, yeah, we know. As a, she was a con artist. Her mother is a con, who raised raised by a mother of a con artist who used her looks and her sex appeal first to con men out of their money. Secondly, then later to catch bounties with their pants down, literally. Yeah, of which her biggest <laughs> bounty, which she showed to Spike, she caught him. By getting him to dance the tango and slowly being able to disarm him. And how did she get him to dance the tango? <sighs> yes, by seducing him. Although they didn't say that. This apparently upset some of the, quote, progressive, unquote, writers. Who thought she needed to be changed. <clears throat> apparently, it got... Ten times worse in season two. The writers even hinted at what they had planned in season two. Also with Ed. There was a little warning signs there when Eden, the actor, actor playing Ed, decided that uh, they're going to play the pronoun game and be referred to as they. This should give you a hint of how they planned on developing Ed. Um, yeah, it must have been bad. Considering how much money, time, and effort was went into designing Cowboy Bebop for it to be announced that it was canceled three weeks, which means the decision was probably made after two weeks. It must have been very bad. But, to, yes, to how Netflix didn't notice that they purposefully Japan-washed the show and how they gave a live-action anime to a group of people who hate anime is beyond me and quite frustrating. Especially since they have three other live action projects including Full Metal Alchemist another show and uh, One Piece I hope they reconsider those projects and now I'm definitely beginning to be of the mind that live action anime should be made by Netflix Japan if Netflix Japan, other than Alice in Borderland, has decided not to make live-action anime, then that should be respected. 
not have some Netflix USA douchebag say, we're going to do it. Instead, if they do that, they usually have an ulterior motive. Such as we just saw here <coughs> uh, with Cowboy Bebop. So, that is what happened. That is why it was canceled. That is why you should not feel sad that you're not going to see the horror show that they had planned for season two. Yeah. Nope. Well, that was the bad news. Uh, and the good news is that it was caught before season two came out and was caught before these writers and activists were able to say, look, we were able to create a successful anime adaptation while stripping all of the misogynistic exploitative concepts that we view as an innate parts of anime and Japanese culture. Ha ha ha, which was their dream. <laughs> Sad, but don't be outraged by this. If you are in any way an anime fan, be thankful Netflix caught this and nipped it in the bud. I'm, I'm, I'm even assuming that they wanted to cancel this before it was released. But they had spent so much time and money and hype on it that they just couldn't do it. They gave it a chance. Maybe on some off chance it would be a runaway hit. In which case, money talks and they would allow the show to progress. But the fact that it was released to mixed reviews um, means that, no, this vision of a corrected anime is not popular on any level and was immediately canceled. Congratulations. Please rethink your plans on One Piece and Full Metal Alchemist and any other live actions. Leave it to Netflix Japan. If you want it, request them to make it. We had the same problem with Battle Angel Alita where they thought that the Alita character was just exploited especially the scene where she offers her boyfriend her heart they just thought that was not good and that's why we're not going to see a sequel to battle angel alita even though i would love to have seen that story completed even james cameron can't get it made sigh okay that's me letting you know what's happening until next time Hi. <laughs>